Now, can you explain why, you know, why your life has been focused, certainly your career, on, on trauma and why, that, uh, why that's happened? My work really has been in developmental neuroscience. My work is really in the origins of the human condition. And, um, these ver and why these early origins let leave such an indelible imprint on our personalities through the rest of our lifespan. And essentially about two decades ago, I became interested in uh, integrating neuroscience with developmental psychology with infancy, and uh, especially the attachment relationship. And so uh, for now two decades, I've been interested in how social relationships impact the development of the human brain, uh, especially in the early attachment relationship between the parents, between the mother, especially, and, and the infant. And again, the idea that these early relationships are not just impacting us psychologically, but are shaping the brain uh, through the emotional interactions. Uh, so essentially, my work for years has been focused on regulation. And just as the outcome of the early attachment is the communication of emotions, positive and negative, and then the interactive regulation of, the, of emotions through a relationship with another human being, well, I'm now seeing that the key to the work with trauma is not so much insight as it is the ability uh, to be able to communicate these emotional states, to feel them in the body, to communicate these to another human being, and then for them to be regulated. Because essentially the origins of trauma are in relationships, and therefore um, the outcome of, of working with the trauma, again, has to be a relational outcome. The real key is that the child has access to, an, to a right brain, to an emotionally sensitive, empathic, intuitive right brain, wherever that comes from. The brain is sensitive to either positive or negative situations. And so if there is nutrition or if there are nutritional deficits or if there is t too much stress or abuse and neglect, it will have a negative trajectory. And the, because you're talking about a critical period of, of, pro, of growth of the, of the right brain. Everybody is now moving into emotions really being central. Yeah. So this is not just my work. I mean, although I have been part of this, what has been called the emotional revolution. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this was a talk that I gave to the American Psychological, yeah. but this is this is worldwide now, uh, and so uh, my my lectures are literally worldwide also. But yes, I mean I've been to Australia four times, but I've been to uh, you know uh, I'm guessing thirty countries in Europe, uh, you know, for the last twenty years over and over. Also, the purpose of the work, and literally who I am, is a match. Um, where that all comes from is from my own early beginnings. I was a very fortunate, my father was a chemical engineer, he was a scientist, he was, had a very, very curious mind. My mother was, was, was a gifted homemaker, uh, this was in the late 40s and the 50s, etc. And uh, at the same time my father was a very warm man and my mother uh, at the same time was a very um, practical woman. So early on, uh, my curiosity was something that they, uh, you know, that they supported. But before I wrote anything, I took 10 years off as a period of self-study. This was 10 years after I had my PhD. Wow. And my wife and I switched income responsibilities, and I just used all of that time for this self-study. There's a university near here, and I went to that university and brought back, you know, reams of studies, etc. I'm a full-time scholar, and I have access in my computers to all of the libraries of the University of California, so I, I can continuously, you know, um, uh, bring in the science and incorporate the science, uh, you know, right here without actually having to be in laboratories and, and actually the research that I'm doing is with laboratories in Australia and in, in England. I have come across people around the world um, who have not only like minds, 
but like hearts. Mm. And, and I think you understand. And, and, and I have forged connections with these people around the world, and this really has been a, a great bonus and a great joy also. And, and when I wrote my first book, I was almost 50. And I think uh, it's not unusual for biologists, uh, because essentially I'm a biologist as well as psychologist, to do their work at later in life. I mean, physicists do it in their 20s. But I think it, it took a certain self-knowledge and a living of life and a living in relationships before I could write about the things that I wanted to write about, et cetera. And uh, when I wrote the book, I knew that I was about 15 years ahead of science. But ultimately, uh, you know, science has caught up on it. <laughs> and so, I mean, when is your, the latest book coming out? Is that? Well, this last book, The Science of the Art of Psychotherapy. Yes, that, oh, that's the, the 2012 book. Yeah, published. that's the 2012 book. Yeah. So that, there are four books now, as well as uh, you know, hundreds of articles. But there are those four books, 94, 2003, 2012. Essentially, for whatever reason it means, every 10 years. So what is your, your greatest dream for the future? Well, you know, I, I mean, I look at that through the age at, at which I am right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at, at this point in time, just for the record, um, I'm doing a lot of mentoring. So I'm, the people who are coming up behind me, they're not only being able to practice, but to teach and to write, et cetera. So I'm looking forward. And as I'm looking forward, uh, what I'm looking forward is literally the next generations. The world has a lot to thank your parents and your family for, because you've affected great change already, and I'm so excited about the future of all that is. So thank your family. I thank your family and the world thanks your family for all that they've done and for you being here. And I bless you, and I'm just so honored to be here and, and part, of, part of this wonderful journey. So. Thank you, David. It's been a pleasure, and I also wish you the best on your important work also. Thanks, sir.